I hope you don't mind that my penis is out. Cause when I said I would Donald Duck, I didn't mean a mascot costume. Sean, we can't start every single song or every single episode with a song. (laughs) My favorite part is that you weren't recording, so I went back and did it twice. Uh, Yeah, so I was like, okay, that's fine. We'll (laughs) be good. down. Because I have a story. I saw a ghost of a cat. You saw a ghost of a cat this week on Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling? Uh, The least listened to Marshland Media Podcast. I wasn't going to include that in the introduction, but true. (laughs) I think if we start hammering that over the head of people, they'll be like, all right, we need to make sure this is the most listened to. And really, that only means, I don't know, 50 people every single week. Which is feasible. I've been I feel like I have been hammering it every time I make appearances on other Marshland shows. Not to get more people to listen, but just to state my existence. Yeah. Just as a flag in the face of uh, nihilistic ennui, you know? Ennui? On the Wii, baby, can oh. we play? Oh my I go god! Some bowling, medical examiner game, Chibi Robo on the Wii, <laughs> Air, Kirby's Air Ride, but played on the Wii. Hell yeah! Freaking WarioWare on the Wii. On the, that, yep. <laughs> Fucking EA Sports titles. It's in the game. On the Wii. Oh, yeah, it's in the Wii. So you saw a cat that was a ghost? Okay, yeah, so it was on my morning walk, as most of my (laughs) stories start out as. Oh, also real quick, uh, and this is the podcast where we watch Lucha Underground, and we talk about it, and we also talk about ghost cats. You were on your morning walk. Yes, and also, it's not just Lucha Underground. Once we're done with that, we'll go to others. I said we were also talking about ghost cats, so they know. Well, ghost cats isn't, I mean, there, I think, might be a Santo movie entitled Santo versus the Eyes of the Ghost Cat. Hell yeah. Yeah. And I hear, I don't know. I just want to go to, I just want to go to like deep in Philly and go like this, the indiest of indie shows. And there's a death match and it's like, I don't know, Nick fucking Gage versus a ghost cat. Nick fucking Gage. Nick fucking Gage. Nick fucking Gage. MDK. Nick Gage is gonna lose to that ghost cat. Yo, you crazy. That's the king, man. Trans rights, bitch. He, Nick Gage Nick is fucking gonna be like... Gage. Nick fucking Gage. He's gonna immediately start crossing his eyes like, oh, ghosts give blowjobs, right? And then he's gonna Wait, like... what? Oh, you... Okay. Take out a razor blade and be like, hey, anyone wanna be cut even though you're not trained to do it? He's literally the nicest fucking guy in the world. He's not. Oh, man, David Arquette, I'm going to show you how hardcore we are. I'm an edgelord. Suck my nuts. Literally and bloody everyone, too. everyone in the industry who has ever run into him has said he's wonderful. He's kind. He's incredibly progressive. He's not afraid to put trans rights on his back when people ask him to. He is the nicest fucking guy in the world. It doesn't mean he can't be an edgelord. So he... Okay. No one show Nick Gage the pain Olympics because he will say, I'll show you. I'll cut I, off my nuts and my dick and shove them inside of me. All right, then. Why don't you talk about your ghost cat story, you piece okay. of trash? So I'm walking and I see Will a cat. Will not stand for Nick Gage slander. I'm walking. I see a cat. <laughs> see how I stopped talking as soon as Sean started talking? Sean needs to start doing that for me. James needs to start respecting the king. You're Nick not the Gage. king. Nick fucking Gage. No, Nick fucking Gage. You, king of what? Nick fucking Shit. Gage. Nick fucking Gage. Nick fucking Gage. Yeah, baby. I'm the I- king of being an asshole. He's like the nicest guy. No, not in the ring and not to David Arquette. Oh, okay. David Arquette. All right. There we go. Give Fuck David Arquette. Okay. I'm fine with that. All right. Cool. See, that's how we do it. We bitch. are very asshole. We are like very to our, at each other's throats today. Yeah. Oh, my God. Because. I blame David Arquette. No, I blame you having such a supple neck. so there was a cat you saw on a walk yes and i'm like okay (laughs) i'm walking i'm walking i see this cat 
It goes a little bit near a bush. You know, like how Michael Myers did it? He's near poking out of a hedge. And then when you walk, oh, my God, where'd he go? I do the same thing and nothing's there. There's no cat. I look down the alleyway, nothing. This cat disappeared. I think it's a ghost of a cat, which also made me think. Michael mm. Myers, spoiler alert for Curse of Michael Myers, is in a druid cult, The Thorn. And in Dungeons and Dragons, there's tree walkers, which is a druid spell where you can go into a tree and go into another one. Michael Myers might be a druid master and he didn't just disappear. He literally disappeared from these trees. I think he tree walked into that hedge and out into another one. Um, so the Druid cult, wait, is that like, I have not, I have not kept up with the new Halloween movies. This isn't new. This is Paul Rudd's first movie. Paul Rudd wasn't in Halloween. Yeah. Halloween six, Curse of Michael Myers. Oh word. They brought in, I didn't realize, damn, I didn't realize he was like a Druid. Yeah. Uh, well, the people are going to be very pissed if like, James, they aren't, stop it. The Thorn trilogy sucked. Still canon. I mean, it's canon for that. It's no longer canon now because the new ones just went Halloween 1 to Halloween 2018. That's fair. And we're going 18 plus as we delve into this fucking wild ass fire that is the temple of Lucia Underground. Shit's getting crazy, <gasps> and I can't wait to unearth this episode. But what's crazier, Sean, is... Yeah. The Hugginator is taking the world All by right. storm. This Nicole's is not... into it. Everyone is into this goddamn Hugginator thing, okay? This N is not the transition I was setting up for. It's picking up traction. Nicole is so into it. Have you seen... You have notes? Hold on. You have notes on this? Yeah, I saw you Nicole... Looked up Nicole wanted okay. me to let everyone know you've seen the dino cats. And if you've seen them in store right. or they're shipped to you there, they look like little dino cats. They're modeled, molded by hand, porn by Nicole's milky whiteness and very, her skin. Very adorable. Very good. Shouts out, darling homebody. And the background of these mini boxes are yeah. a prehistoric setting, volcano, all of that. Well, Nicole is officially making dino dogs, and they will be shipped in these adorable, super kuai versions of the Dominator. Dominator or Hugginator? Because these are two very different products. Well, I this, have is, put this is a triple mm. D, just like my titty size. Okay, then. The Dino Doggo Dominator, because we're also uh, tired of Doggo. Stop saying it. So we're going to. You're selling it. We're going to squish these little guys, but oh it'll be God. tight. Actually, it's actually good for shipping. Tightly packed so it doesn't move around. Not going to break. Well, shouts out to our local mailmen. Uh, they're doing their damnedest. Mm -hmm. But I do not support this Dominator agenda. Hugginator, I think, is fine. Uh, and if you're wondering what a dominator is, it is a cage that gets smaller and smaller slowly to crush whatever is inside of the cage. No, it does not crush. It gives your dog a sense of fear as they should have. Yes, it waterboards them, but instead of simulated drowning, it is simulated crushing. But it never crushes them. As long as you hook the leg, it's a safety mechanism, so they stay in the same center of the room. And there's, like, clips that you put on to be like, my dog is this size, and it will only squeeze down to that far. But the dog's like, <laughs> like they should. Like, yeah, okay, mental torture. For the dog inside of a small cage. Uh, not on board with this still. Dogs have it too good. They don't. Oh, okay. Like, oh, <laughs> dog, my dog's my grand puppy. Oh, shut up, mom. Yo. Oh, my gosh. Put your mother in a dominator and get fucked. You okay. ass. Oh, all right, then. I I'm fine with that. But then leave the dogs out. Stop stop mentally torturing dogs. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a dominator the size of pet and its owner specifically a dog and then it crushes simulation both of them it is a machine designed to mentally torture dogs yeah 
Why is why is it so controversial for me to be against the mental torture of dogs? Oh, and you want to know on the other side of the wall, like a dog treat will be there. They'll never be able to get at it. That is this is not OK. This is not a good th- product. We'll put it in like a box that has holes in it. So the whiff. Oh, and then a fan on the other side. So it whiffs right into them. They smell it, get closer, closer. They try to chomp at it. Uh, uh-uh, They're just chomping at bits. Oh, my gosh. There are somewhere uh, the ghost of dull close is like, Goose, why don't you yes and this bit? What's wrong with you? Why are you such a shitty improviser? I don't know why I'm a shitty improviser. No, you've been but yes I'm and against this. this bit. No, I am. I, re- I will not yes and this bit. No, I will not yes and this machine. You are saying, yes, this concept is correct. And this is how I feel about it. I guess. I don't know. Dull Close can suck a mean one. You love Dell Close's truth in comedy. Yo, I'll fucking throw him in the Weapon X blood owl. Big cage style. Oh, man. In cages? You want to know what? They've been around forever. Archaeologists have unearthed them from the underground. Oh, shit. Guys, we are continuing our December celebration of my favorite rap group from Coldwater, Michigan, Syndicate Records, a.k.a. Coldwater's Finest. Seanathan, did you listen to any of this album before I continue? Jameson, I did. Okay, hell yeah. I listened to this album. Yeah, yeah. The album or the year is 2005, Sean. Mm -hmm. I hear word that Elbow and GPG have finished not only their first collabo project, but also their first fully self-produced album, and it's called The Art of Fact. Now- I preached of Christmas time merriment last episode when it comes to hearing these albums for the first time. But this is different, even though it went into heavy rotation during the following school time winter breaks throughout the years. I got Artifact during this summer of 2005 when my parents bought a boat on the cheap. It could be, this is speculation, but I'm pretty sure this is how we got possession of this big boat it was a situation where my father's business partner was going through a divorce and in classic old school man fashion he said the ex bitch ain't getting shit (laughs) so this boat with a sizable cabin came to us full time and a big ass big screen tv came to us part time we had the tv on loan for maybe half a year until the divorce was finalized, then it went back to its rightful owner, according to the patriarchy. Was was that the ungrateful bitch? No, this is the man. Like, this dude gave off, like, Tim the Tool Man Taylor vibes if all of a sudden he was going through a divorce. (laughs) Yeah, he was constantly... So, Tim the Tool Man Taylor. You want to know what? Put him in the Dominator. He always is being a dog. Oh, gosh, I'm now I'm torn because I don't think I want to be pro torture, period. But I hate Tim the Toolman Taylor. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, wait, no, I meant so. Wait, so who got the t- who got the TV in the end? The man did. Okay, good, 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 good. He said, "Oh, I sold it, or oh, I gave it to someone to the wife he was going through a divorce with." Yeah. But in reality, he just gave it to us to keep in our living room and consume. This was our first time ever having picture in picture. So what we would do nice. was play Need for Speed Underground while watching Aqua Teen Hunger Force. It was a glorious summer. Nifty. All the while, you were essentially this man's Swiss bank account. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big untraced build styles. Yeah, while yeah. you speed through those streets, big Aqua Teen style. <laughs> and this is... Wait, I forgot. What does this have to do with the album again? Okay, this summer would be the summer between 7th and 8th grade. Some okay. peak depression times for your old boy, James, without knowing that that's what it was. It was undiagnosed, but oh, the following year it would be. So, when my parents decided to have a weekend trip out on Lake Michigan, this was the summer, just sleeping overnight in this bow, all I did was feel miserable with the only respite being the artifact on repeat. Just constantly, I was uh, depressed, saying, oh, I'm sad, and just repeat this 10 or 11 track album over and over again. Nice. Not talking to my family. 
not the depression part, but uh, mm-hmm. the respite and the finding it, finding it a positive outlet. Teenage depression's pretty cool, man. Well, okay. It, 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 it builds character, <laughs> okay. baby. Um, I wouldn't be funny if I weren't a depressive bro. Literally my least favorite take. <laughs> I wouldn't have cool things to talk about like, hey, remember New Year's Eve when I was 15 years old? I had the knife up against my wrist, but I w- didn't want to do that to my father because he was gone for the weekend. And man, he would have come back not only to me dead, but a bloated corpse of his son. That's not a good icebreaker. I don't know how many times I can put that out there. Whoa, the uh, icebreaker? That's how I should... I should have been a bloated corpse instead. I wouldn't be all moldy and stuff. I would have been preserved. I should have went out to the Lake Michigan and dunked on in there. Okay. Man, Sean, where were you in Uh, 2007? Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay. Uh, where was I? Where was I? This album was revolutionary, being the first self-produced album from the crew, meaning they made all the beats themselves and ended up shaping the direction of their future releases. Plus, I only managed to get a single friend of mine into Coldwater's Finest. His name was Tyler, but not that Tyler or not that Tyler, who I gave my original copy of Artifact 2, which means for years I only had a ripped look. Low bitrate Windows Media audio version, which sounded terrible quality wise. It sounded bit crushed. It was not good until, Jonathan, last week when Elbow and GPG personally sent me high res files. Yeah. Oh, I should also say, like, I'm friends with these dudes now, (laughs) as it is with most of my, like, obsessions when it comes to underground rap music. And I joke, hey, I guess I should have been a little more into Ludacris. Do you think you could wait? Are are you suggesting you should be friends with Ludacris by now? No, I was saying like if I was even more like, oh, my God, I'm obsessed with Ludacris, even though for a little bit I I listened to word of mouth over and over again. But Mm -hmm. if I was like only as like hardcore into Ludacris as I was these individuals or Kill Yourself Productions, hey, you want to know maybe Ludacris and I would have been friends. Oh man, I bet you I bet you and Ludacris would have a good time. Oh yeah. I bet Ludacris plays Need for Speed. Oh he I for sure no did. Oh yeah. All right, Ludacris, get on this podcast. We'll talk about Need for Speed mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. uh your finisher from the first Def Jam game. Hell yeah. Okay, That's so cool. I love this album. It's a masterpiece, and I'll put X Low or Xylo Hydro in after this segment so everyone can hear it. I think that's the best one on the album. And the album in full will be on the Discord. I know. I really liked Kaleidoscope. I thought it was such a, I don't know, gave me a real good feel. Maybe I needed like a feel good like tune, mm-hmm. uh, tune ski. And like, especially this, the back half of this album was just like, oh, nice. Like, just, oh. I don't know. Oh, nice. That's the vibe I got. I, I think because I'm so into hardcore rap music, I was like, man, the first half just is so fucking good. I'm, I'm afraid what Sean's going to think of the back half. See, and because I like hardcore just in general, uh, hip hop, punk, porn. Yeah, I was getting there. Don't <laughs> I was getting there. All right, <laughs> there's a delay. But, yeah, yeah, but I was thinking like I don't know. I think I was just I don't know. I just kind of needed like like what other tracks? Kaleidoscope. The oh my gosh, the beginning of the end. Is that the name of the last track? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for whatever, for whatever reason, that's just like what I needed at the time. Uh, Hell so yeah. it was nice to get. Yeah. Kaleidoscope was my favorite song on the album when I was a teenager, but now as someone who doesn't look too fondly on my teenage experience, like life began in 2013 when I met Nicole. So, and when Mm. I was like getting real good at rapping. Yay. Also when, when I was done in that relationship with my ex bitch, no, I'm kidding. Yo, make sure you make sure you don't let her get the boat. Give me a boat so she can't take nothing. Well, good thing I didn't buy a tempur when we were together because I would have had to be like, well, I guess I need this tempur Yeah, you. well, you would have to give me the tempur so she oh. doesn't get into the breakup. But I fuck mattresses and you don't want to give me a temp. I'll tell you right now, you don't want to give me, give me a tempur I used to. I, I used mattresses. to just hump the mattress. That's how I would masturbate as a teen up until way too late in my life. Honestly, it's not 
Like, if you can actually sort it all out as far as masturbation goes, it's a better workout than just your arm. Oh, no. It's not a, it's not a better session, but it's a better workout. My ass as a teenager was... I had no muscle on my body besides my ass. And in retrospect, I realized, oh, that's because I was laying face down on my bed, humping my mattress, just rubbing my little peen on it. Oh, man. I'm not I don't claim to see the future. But the fact that I can see that in this episode description on Twitter is going to be James and Sean talk about humping a mattress. Uh Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Harmony Corinne, you can finally (laughs) make the sequel to Trash Humpers. It's Mattress Humpers starring these two fools. Yeah. James, what else you want? What else you want to like people to really take away from this album? It's hardcore. It's revolutionary. It's de-evolutionary X style. Mm. (laughs) Guys. Please listen to Piss Miss. It's coming out Thursday. It, Sean, I it's was. Crash Fire. At 6 a.m., I was just so pissed the following day having to edit the files. It took me two hours just to treat the files before starting to edit. So then I was like, you want to know what? At least the, like, when people talk, it'll sound fine. But. I am going through and just ma- doing the quickest edit ever. So it, it probably took two hours to edit after the two hours, but it, it'll sound fine, people, but it's not the tight edit you're used to. There were five people just screaming in a room. Yeah, you probably don't want to invite me on uh, podcasts anymore if you're listening to this. Invite James. He's a wonderful guest. If I can't see my levels, though, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna scream the DX theme song. Well, no, that's and all... it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Even if you were the microphone was turned down and you weren't peeking, you were still screaming the DX while other people were talking. That was the yeah, issue because that was more important. No, it wasn't, and you were making us it drink. Was. It was, and you should stay hydrated and not pee. How do you think I win Pismus? Christmas, by the way, if you're wondering, is a competition as well as a holiday. <laughs> and that's how I win. I play the offensive, you know? I've never thought of Pissmas as it actually is, which is a competition. As well as a holiday. It's both. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But do you want to get into this goddamn episode? I would love to get into episode. Oh my gosh, I didn't write I didn't write oh I did write that down the title. Episode 13 of season one of Lucha Underground, Johnny Mundo versus The Machine. Before we start it off, uh, James, er early takeaways uh, from the episode. This one was dope. We had, I think, four matches. The first four Mm -hmm. being like tight, very well, just action packed. Then the fourth one at first I hated, but then I was like, oh, no, this fucking rocks. Yeah, for like, I like it because you messaged me. Uh, it's like a lot of lore in this episode, which is true. A lot oh, yeah. of stories, a lot of characters move forward. But in addition, some of the best, like just straight up wrestling. I think this was, I I had a very fun time uh, watching these matches. And even the quick little recap. If you missed last week's episode, just so you know, Johnny chokes Cueto, uh, Matanza, and Brian Cage kicks dicks to sad music. The dark match this week would have been a three-on-two handicap match. The crew, Bale, Cortez Castro, and Mr. Cisco, losing to Hernandez and Jeff Cobb, which is very interesting for reasons we won't get into in this episode, probably. Okay. But we start off, uh, Mariachi El Bronx is the house band today, and they play us into the temple. Oh, and then we have two sexy people in the ring. Big fit update, too, on commentary. No more gray hoodie, which is all I was asking for. Striker with the leather blazer, which I was struggling so hard. I know I've seen leather blazers. Like, it's not just a leather jacket. It's not a blazer. It is a leather blazer. And I know I've seen... I think I've seen my dad in stuff like this, but that's not a very popular reference because not everyone here knows who my dad is. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Um... But like I like, but I liked, I liked it. I liked this look on Striker, as well as Yo Vampiro's jacket. I loved it. I just yeah. loved Vampiro's jacket. He had a good jacket. Sean, can, the, I, my, can I mm-hmm. can I say a slightly fucked up joke? 
Are you going to talk about my dad? Maybe. Nope. Then okay. Nope. Dang then it. Nope. it if you a have good to ask. Turn of if phrase. you have to ask. All right. If it's a turn of phrase, can is there any way you could turn the phrase about your dad? Your dad. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, guys, my mm-hmm. dad died last night. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. So, uh, his, uh, like, he would always wear a uh, Cub Scout, bright orange shirt. It had the Cub Scouts just printed right on it. But like, uh, that's not an experience you can experience right now. It's currently out of print experience. It's an out of print look. Okay. I was going to say your dad's. Yeah. yeah. You can't experience Mm -hmm. it or you can't see this. It's out of print. I have never been happier to shut something down in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would have been easier if I just said, like, oh, yeah, that can't see your dad's look because it's out of print. Yeah, I know. And I, then I would have cried because I miss him every day. Oh, my Vampiro's God. Vampiro's very on. excited. Oh, Sean, why are we still doing this? Let's put your dad's look back in print. You do, do you still own your dad's clothes? Probably not as many as I'd like to. Okay, well, uh, go to your stepmother, find, go rummage through while you're in Buffalo this Christmas time and just start Instagramming like this was my dad and do like, like the first is you and then, or maybe the first is your dad. Who's more handsome, your dad or you? I don't feel comfortable talking about this anymore. Okay, all right. Well, hey. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) It's what I want to start doing with Karen Foster's outfits from step by step i do want to start once my hair is long enough wait is karen foster no longer alive no no i just want to like i mean technically uh, we don't know in storyline she could have died but is the actor still alive yeah the actress is still alive yeah okay so i i want to start doing scared a uh, like hey here's her in this episode and then i will try to mimic not only her hair but also her outfits Karen was the older blonde sister, correct? No, that's Dana. Oh, see, Dana was my fit with okay. all the ripped jeans and the flannel. Like, I was a big Dana guy. Oh, I what truly... Are you talking no, about? no, no, no. Dana's hair in season two was fucking amazing. However, because that's 1991 to 92, you... Uh, while I'm watching this, I am seeing 80s hair fashion go out of phase and into 90s. And 90s hair fucking sucked. It was just flat, a little bit of a, like, bob curve to it, and that's it. It's disgusting. I don't know. I mean, the Aniston comes through, and that becomes a big deal. Ugh. I feel like the Aniston is a good look. I don't know. I'm trying to think of, like, real, like, 90s, 90s... 90s hair, uh, something like Hackers, Angelina Jolie Hackers, but everything about Angelina, Angelina Jolie and Hackers is fucking a phenomenal. It's just a very, that entire, whoever costume designed Hackers, uh, they need more Oscars because they fucking crushed it. Hell yeah, give it to them, baby. Ow, 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 Absolutely. Ow, ow. Just like, just like uh, Hernandez and Jeff Cobb gave it to the crew and Vampiro is giving us just a very, Vampiro is so excited in his recap of last week, and I just want, something about Vampiro, I know he's, pr- he might not be the nicest guy in the world, uh, I never met him personally, I don't know, but he's just so sweet when he's talking about how much violence happened last week. He's just, mm-hmm. he's, he, he's, he's like a child of, at Christmas, but the, 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 the present is filled with blood. I will say that I watched this in our living room, opposed to uh, on the computer because one i woke up late meaning i woke up at 8 a.m mm-hmm. instead of 5 30 a.m and nicole woke up at noon so i was just like i I'm guess i'm gonna watch it so i didn't have headphones on and i think this is actually if i want to enjoy it more watch it without headphones on because I just i was able to eliminate these two fuckers talking and being like, make just, hey, uh, y- you think women are sexy? You know, I think women are sexy. I want to fuck them. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Don't worry, listeners. I watch the episodes with headphones. So I've got all your women are sexy notes right here. Grabs my nuts. Uh, there is one very stupid yet funny thing I think Vampiro said later, but we'll get into that. All right. You ready for this first match? Yeah. Jam- Son of Havoc with Ivelisse versus my man and Helico. Before we break down, uh, any, any sort of like initial like uh, thoughts on this? Go oh, ahead. man. 
Well, Eva Lise is so tired of reading tweets just like me. Not because of content, because the blue light hurts my eyes. Yeah, let's get into it. Before we before we even get into uh, introductions, as we start the match, uh, those sexy people in the ring we alluded to earlier mm-hmm. are Son of Havoc and Eva Lise. Eva Lise grabs the mic. I love uh, the exact the similar quote is because it's not exact. I don't date losers. It's referring to all those tweets and everyone giving uh, M Dog shit. I don't date losers. If anyone has a problem with him, you have a problem with me too. You also have a problem with young Americans because he is a young Olympic gold medalist. You like Russia, I guess, Twitter. Twitter, you fucking Russian bots. Enter my guy and Helico to almost smells like Teen Spirit Club Remix. It took me a while. Uh, like I'm like I'm sitting there, I'm watching the episode, and I'm rewinding. I grab my guitar at one point because I'm like, I know this guitar riff they're playing over him. Like his entrance theme is a song. It's not is is a is a real song. Like it's one of those like I think I landed on "Smells Like Teen Spirit." I think it's those four chords. The da 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 B. What is it? F B flat G sharp C sharp something like that. Uh, I think that's why I laid it on, but definitely it's definitely a real song that then they sort of slightly changed so they couldn't get sued. Crazy Frog? It might have been Crazy Frog. Bog. That would be my entrance music or the hamster song. I think I would come out to uh, We Love These Subs by the Spong Monkeys. That was pretty cool. It was a Quiznos ad. I'd come out to Kings of Snuff by Mental Ward. Yeah, I'd come out to this to the plapping sounds of just two people fucking oh man i'd come plap, out to gg allen's anal cunt yeah i'd co- i'd come I'd, I'd come out to uh, uh the the, le- the last little bit of soap from a bottle of soap being squeezed out but what's that oh it's blood instead of soap oh man i'd come yeah me too me too <laughs> yeah yeah we're gonna come um i really like this before breaking into it I'm trying to do something on these episodes where I'm just notating the story moments mm-hmm. as opposed to like, be, you know, move by move. I'm just such a fan of Helico, uh, so <laughs> I'm going to try. He's a company man. And Helico is? Yeah, because he comes out in like a hoodie that has the Lucha Underground logo on it. This is true. He has a T-shirt and the hat, both yeah. Lucha Underground. This man, is selling, this man is selling merchandise on his beautifully mm-hmm. supple, mm-hmm. tall, slender body. But like... It's weird. A lot of Son of Havoc chants in this, from this crowd. Son of Havoc and Helico. Yeah, but like Son of Havoc, I think he's a little bit half. louder. Oh. I, th- I think it might have been a little more Son of Havoc. Hey, you, you had headphones on, so I'll trust your judgment over mine. Yeah, like maybe maybe even 70-30, but definitely 60-40, which makes sense. Son of Havoc has been in, he's been on TV. This is their 13th episode, so they would have had, what, like four recording sessions up until this point maybe yeah but like definitely people are very on board and it, you know we've talked about before son of havoc the man behind the mask has been a long time independent darling and has like not just paid his dues like you know meeting people and do, you know doing the shows but like physically has learned how to do a lot of really cool shit he's a mm-hmm. very exciting wrestler to watch i would also um, like to know when i i guess i can research this somehow when mm-hmm. they're taped to when they're aired like how many yeah. episodes is it like one week and they i guess they would always have one or two in the can maybe remind me after this uh because we'll look it up and let people know next week mm-hmm. uh because that's that's a very that's a very good question uh or maybe it's like all one summer oh no because we know it's they're, they're doing it only on the weekends yeah but yeah this is a uh, i i have a, a very fun well-paced just like a really interesting matchup between these two guys. Son of Havoc, the high flyer, like a very renowned sort of fast technician. Can't really get a lot of high flying offense in on the very lanky and helico. Yeah. Who's using a lot of limbs, like a lot of kicks that he's got these legs that can kind of kick you from 20 feet away. So Son of Havoc having to change his game plan up, a lot of his offense coming from these out of nowhere huge grapples, these slams and these bombs. And that's kind of, but he he has enough of those that he's keeping Angelico on his toes. I think he, Son of Havoc is on top for a lot of this match. 
It's, it's very back and forth. You want to mm. hear who wasn't on top during this match and had one hardcore bomb? Oh, I can't wait to hear this. It was Vampiro because he says, hey, guys, I, I just got to give a shout to my boy watching this. Kishi. That's how like he had instead of just yeah. saying, hey, I got to give a shout to my boy watching this Kishi. It's hey, I got to give a shout out. To my boy watching this, Kishi. It, he was like, reading. He was reading his notes. It was so <laughs> uh, like dot 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 parenthetical beat, and then start. Uh, he felt like a robot that was processing. And I couldn't. Is it? Is he referring to Rikishi? I don't know. Fat too. The master of the stink face. That's the guy he used to. He used to shove your, his butt in your face during the WWF. Mm. Hell yeah. Uh, this is the best reaction to Stink Face I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Hell true, yeah. True. Absolutely. <laughs> so in this, I came up with what I would love to see this gimmick because Ivelisse is constantly like grabbing onto Angelico's uh, shins and whatnot to fuck yeah, she him grabs up. His, she grabs his feet to trip him up. She at one point grabs the back of his head while Havoc distracts the referee to kind of choke him on that middle rope. Okay, so... In this vein, in the vein of like far political movements, like far right, far left, I would love to see a far face movement where these good guys are such good guys that they, if someone interferes from outside of the ring, they say, I don't give a shit about this match. And they go and just beat the shit out of whoever was in fearing like <laughs> like, I mean, as violent as you can get in your promotion. But I would love to see like the boys style or invincible style of just our hero get out of the ring and just take someone to task of you are interfering with the honor of this sport. So I'm going to make sure you never do it again and just obliterate this individual. The interesting, I'm, try, I'm trying to remember because I can't think of, I've certainly thought of, I, I can, there have been times where people do get their comeuppance and they kind of chase them, but I can't think of one off the top of my head where whoever is being interfered on says, fuck this match. I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't need, I, I I just need to hurt this person real quick. I can't think of something like that. The weird, th the interesting thing though, also, uh, when you, as far as like, you know, heroes and villains and baby faces and bat and heels, I think the, it's more of a heel move to be that brutal, which not, not to say you can't get cheered. You can't be like, you can't be a good guy. John Moxley is a very brutal style wrestler who, for the most part, is presented as a baby face. But there is something very evil about that level, that much violence. Yeah, which that's why it's a far movement where it's like, oh, well, you're a good guy. But oh, wow, we don't like how you're handling this. It would be an instance of. Like, uh, I, I can think of maybe like the walking dead, that dude who's like, I got to protect my people and just beats the shit out of people as like a more of a fear Negan. tactic. Yeah, that dude uh, to mm. uh, to show everyone like, hey, you are all safe until you step out of line. <laughs> that famous baby face. Negan. <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> what else he does. I assumed he was. He's a, he, he's a villain. He's a big he's a big time villain. OK, so he wasn't like protecting his flock. He would tell them that, but that's like kind of, you know, like a cult leader does. Okay, or like yeah. a very manipulative person. I want that. I want a politician who will get the job done, okay? <laughs> the big, big law and order style from James over here. Yeah, I just thought that would be cool. Yeah, it would be. I would love to see that. I don't know. that, But, it's, but I almost want to see that as like the beginning of their heel turn. Where they're like, fuck, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of playing by the rules. I'm sick of getting fucked on by just being the good guy. No more. Play, th play that track, Mr. Cooper, for I am no more Mr. Nice Guy and I am no more Mr. Klee -E -E Yeah. Yeah. Like it's a very cool. Yeah, I like that. It's a good idea. James, you had a good idea. God, someone put me in a goddamn writer's room. <laughs> um, well, uh, <laughs> back to the match uh, real quick because we... Uh, Oh, wait, no, I didn't, maybe I didn't have anything more to say. I just got one more, which is uh, the end. It's, it's post-finish. 
Yeah. Uh, then I'll, uh, I'll real quick kind of talk through the match. Just kind of the story between the two where Son of Havoc and he's, like he's 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 getting his high spots in. He's getting his he's getting these big bombs in that can start setting up for his more high flying stuff. Clearly showing off. He's a talented guy. Mm-hmm. Like one of the things we talked about before about Rudos and heels is that they need to cheat to win. Son of Havoc kind of showing off. He doesn't necessarily need to. He just can't stop getting in his own way. Yeah. Meanwhile, and Helico, like this is definitely more of the story of Son of Havoc and Ivelisse. But at Helico's, what at, at Helico right now has this laid back confidence of someone with immense ability. Like he's very laid back. He's very cool. I would compare it to ECW Rob Van Dam or Rob Van Dam was very like almost people. In, there's a lot of talk about intensity, uh, which is great, but not every character needs to be intense. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just have that one guy who is like, I'm like really good. And I don't know how to really talk about it. So I'll just like, that's kind of what a helico is doing. It's like not to be cocky, but like I am really good. And uh, so this is this is the story. Yes, go ahead. Rob Van Dam's like, not to be cocky, but like, I'm stoned right now. This is true. <laughs> so this is the story. It's a very back and forth. We get to the end. Ivelisse is on the apron. Son of Havoc takes a kiss, a cute little peck on the cheek from Ivelisse. Mm. Mm. And Helico tries to cut off Son of Havoc, but he ducks, goes behind, and Helico catches himself ah, right before he pops Ivelisse. Then Son of Havoc tries to cut him off. Kind of the same thing. And Helico goes behind. Son of Havoc stops himself from punching Ivelisse. Nobody has punched Ivelisse. Mm-hmm. All, these, all these wonderful people. Eventually, Son of Havoc does get the go behind. Pushes and Helico into Ivelisse. And Helico goes for the kiss. I don't blame him. But receives the slap instead. Yeah. But Ivelisse only has got lips for the son of the road man, Havoc. Ivelisse slaps and Helico, Son of Havoc, rolls up, gets the two, and Helico, as he's kicking out, pushes Son of Havoc into Ivelisse. She's been on the apron the whole time. Some of this is on her. Yeah. <laughs> In a brutal, like, spears her, almost, off of the apron, and Helico rolls up Son of Havoc for the 1-2-3 victory at 6 minutes and 32 seconds. I also really liked that not only was he like, he wasn't holding the legs, he was holding the shoulders down in the mm-hmm. roll-up. It was very technically sound. Yeah, uh, and Helico is arguably one of the, I think underrated today, chain wrestlers and sort of grapples. Even when they start the match, my favorite way how they started it was... And Helico, knowing Son of Havoc is a very fast, a very speedy wrestler, sort of ties him up in knots to frustrate him. Like he's just doing a lot of go behinds and arm traps and like, yeah, a lot of like arm locks so that when Son of Havoc does decide to build up this momentum and Helico just drops him with a drop kick. Like this is my favorite. Oh, this is kind of my favorite style. And I love laid back confidence. There's so many reasons I love Angelico. I think this match it's this for this match alone. Maybe I'm too much of a mark. Go out and check it out. They're telling the Son of Havoc story, uh, and Helico is finally getting a chance to shine. I love it. We also see that he's a man of the people because he's in the crowd on the crowd celebrating. Yeah, he's he just and Helico just pops up on somebody's lap and kind of shrugs like, I guess I'm a sexy boy. I don't know. I love it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Meanwhile, Ivelisse and Son of Havoc are not celebrating. Uh, Son of Havoc goes out to Ivelisse to apologize. I'm sorry, Angela. I don't know. Every time a dude apologizes to his uh, significant other, I just think of him. I'm sorry, Angela. Every dude is Tony from Who's the Boss to me. Oh, I thought that was Rambo. Yeah, same guy, right? I'm sorry, Angela. I had to murder this entire village of people. Well, doesn't he say Angela in Rocky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says Angela. And then he rips his shirt in the rain. And then uh, Angela's like, I've always relied on the kindness of strangers. I, I am. We're all we're discussing things I have never seen before. <laughs> so all three of these. I just combined every Italian actor into one person. Hell yeah. <laughs> just like uh, we did with Bible Man. Absolutely. Listen to the episode. Ivelisse is pissed at Son of Havoc. Does not accept the apology. Just walks walks away without him. And the big and Son of Havoc is left broken and alone to a, a shower of you fucked up chants, which are bleeped out for the first time. Mm-hmm. And I love and, and I, but I'm and I'm so invested 
where this story is going. Son of, they might flip Son of Havoc into a hero. He's really getting over with the audience. Mm-hmm. Grandson of Havoc. Oh, what does that mean? Maybe she's pregnant. Whoa, and that's why that's why he's she's so mad. She speared him in the belly. Mm-hmm. He speared her in the belly. Well, it, it was more into her clavicle or titty, but she needs those that's... titties to give subsidence to baby. Yeah, and she needs those clavicles to teach the baby good morals. A uh, spear into the booby and it explodes in a rain of milk and blood. That's my favorite Slayer song. We cut to Cueto, Dario Cueto's office, where Dario is talking to somebody, says, we haven't seen you since Aztec Warfare, but you're ready for some action. Uh, since you've been gone, we've had time to cool off, so let's let bygones be bygone. And Johnny fuck. Again, Mundo is on the other side of this desk. Hey, you got one thing right. <laughs> I, I do want in more fights. That is <laughs> James, weren't you excited just pissing out of your seat as soon as you saw Johnny Mundo back upon your television screen? I sure was, and I loved a word he said. Because they, <laughs> they, they, he says, all right, you want to know what? When you come in, you're a main event. So tonight, main event, you Versus the machine cage. And Johnny Mundo says, who that ham bone who tore up the title belt last week? Ham bone, ham bone, ham bone, ham bone. It is something that like a nickname that I will call Nicole here and there. But whenever I hear ham bone, I'm guessing you've (laughs) seen the Dexter's Laboratory episode where they go on a road trip and they go to a diner and they say, oh, do you have hamburgers? And the waitress says, no, we don't got hamburgers. We got ham sandwiches, ham bones, ham hocks. And like she keeps going and Dexter leans over towards Dee Dee and goes, Dee Dee, what is a ham hock? (laughs) It's very funny. Check that episode out. I love that word as well. I yeah, also love Terrio solemnly nods as soon as he says ham when he says ham bone <laughs> like that. It's like, yes, they ham bone. You've been watching the product. <laughs> so Mundo says, you mean that ham bone that tore your title apart? Solemn nod. Well, you better get a new one and puts on his sunglasses. Big David Caruso style. Johnny Mundo is the fucking man. Oh, I oh. And then a sound like pastiche comes in and it's like, oh, because they could not afford to clear the who. No, they yeah, are yeah, yeah. very, ex- very expensive. Yeah. We go. We cut to the ring for our next match. Famous B, who we also haven't seen since Aztec Warfare mm-hmm. versus Pentagon Junior, baby. And guys, we've said it so many times. This episode solidifies This is WMAC Masters or Tekken. Mm -hmm. Just the packages we get with this and one later on at the end. Just we're in a video game now. Oh, absolutely. As Pentagon's making his way to the ring, we get a hype package, which we've seen something like this before in the dojo of Penta. Mm -hmm. Uh, But just this like oddly like moonlit dojo. Pentagon's fighting all all sorts of martial artists. Uh, there's kickboxer. Uh, looks like there there is a, a, a Shotokan karate guy. I don't think is I don't think that style is called karate guy. But I'm an insensitive fool, and it's just Pentagon like fighting all these styles and uh, coming up with his own way to sort of defeat them. He puts in this voiceover voiced by Pentagon. Uh, he puts over the deadly survival of martial arts. And while he was taught to respect his teachers and those that came before him. It was only through the amalgamation of styles and Lucha Libre that his mission will be complete. Like that he has, I have respect for those that came before me, but I'm doing my own thing. I'm combining everything I've learned to really ace this, these SATs. But SAT stands for sexy ass trashing because he's trashing the asses of these other sexy men in the ring with him or skillful art of terror yeah that's much better i got <laughs> did it or did skillful fear in my arts eyes? of tactics uh you know something like that yeah or uh s- super ass toys oh man a skillful art of terror oh my god what could 
cages could be in could be art, you know. So the Dominator is an SAT. Yeah, no, 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 no. Listen, I had nothing going into this. Clearly, I'm still not ready to sign off on ter- on the Dominator. You don't need to sign off. We need opposition. I, no. Why do why why do you need opposition? If you if you're facing opposition, that might be a sign that this product is a crime against humanity. Oh, okay, all right. Rap music in general was a lot of people were tr- putting the hands down fists of NWA or Public Enemy. You're calling me Tipper Gore. Yes. Because I don't sign off on torturing puppies. No, I'm just saying you need to be a provocateur. Pentagon Jr. goes on to say my way of fighting encapsulates the dark parts of the imagination and the human spirit, free to fight without limitations. Zero miedo. Which I guess also means zero respect is what we're about to find out. Well, we talk about, he he kind of talks about it where he, it's not that he doesn't have respect, it's just that he's trying to move the art form forward, which... Is it, is it, it's, inter- it's an interesting story being told in this match versus Famous B, where Famous B, who is a SoCal guy and kind of has this indie wrestling style that became very popular in SoCal, which is a l- very Lucha influenced. PG it's very dub. flashy. PG Dub, baby. It's very flashy. It's very fast. It's very high flying. Where Pentagon Jr. is sort of taking this Lucha, this Lucha style into a very different direction where it's much more direct and it's much more violent. If someone was going to say, fuck this match, I need to beat the shit out of Bobby the Brain Heaton because he keeps interfering. Like you were saying like that Pentagon Jr. might be your guy to do that, Mm -hmm. you know? But he wants Mortal Kombat. He wants Shaolin or Shao Kahn. What's the dude's name? Shao Kahn. Shao Kahn saying like, hey, your soul is mine and rip off an arm or something. That's what Pentagon Jr. wants. I want an upstanding individual who kind of snaps. It is like, no, get out of my ring if you're not on the bill. <laughs> That's You know what? That's true. Pentagon is already kind of snapped. That would be um. like <laughs> if someone's like, oh, you want to know what? In Mortal Kombat, mm-hmm. put... <laughs> Put railing on this fucking ring so we're not falling into acid. <laughs> you just want an OSHA committee in your Mortal Kombat game. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, Penta wants to put an oh shit committee <gasps> into the face of Famous B. Like, I lo- like it's, he just... And kind of like fighting games, I feel like... I like that you brought it up, too, because Pentagon Jr. in this match, he... F- it feels like like punish like he's he's throwing out punishes mm-hmm. like famous B is throwing out like his combo his combo opener but Penta ducks and he's just gonna punish with an uppercut like it like that that's the style of fighting it feels like he's throwing out all these he's not he's he's not the combo starter he's waiting for his opponent to throw a wild haymaker and then just punish uh-huh. it's very exci- uh, exciting but short match Penta wins via submission at a minute thirty two. Mm-hmm. And then even after he wins, he's still snapping arms. Yeah, he should have been disqualified. Like, the win should have been null and void. That happens. That's up to, it's up to referee discretion. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it don't. Oh, Not this- in the temple, baby. In the temple, yeah. baby. You want those disqualifications? You want those rules? How about you hit WWE? Why don't you go ask Jeff Jarrett for a whole bunch of gold at TNA? TNA. Down here at the temple? Oh, we snapping limbs and we... Trim and trim. I, 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 I'm, I'm a pubic hair designer. Cracking limbs and snacking quim. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I, I, I know if I ever say the worst thing possible, James will still yes and me. And I thank him for that. Well, I was just coming up with a nice rhyme. I liked it. Post-match, Penta has a mic in the ring, pledges his loyalty to Master, who we do not know. Splinter, probably. Probably Splinter. Nah, Shredder. You think he's, he might be a Shredder guy. Uh, 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 Splinter would smack you with a cane. Yeah, Splinter would not stand up for you breaking someone's arm after the match. Oh my God. Splinter has a cane. Conan mm-hmm. has a cane. Same person. 
Oh my god, Conan is Splinter, true! And Pentagon is a sad teenager playing an arcade game in his in his sketchy warehouse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now the now the interesting thing about this match is kind of like Son of Havoc, crowds on board with Penta. A lot of Sarah Miedo chants. These two like major kind of villains, the crowd's just super behind. It's interesting seeing how they're gonna be presented in the future. I've never seen Penta as a villain, just like a tweener yes that's fair more of a willing to anti-hero i mm-hmm. guess kind of a willing to do anything sort of guy uh but people i mean it's, it's 2014 2015 people love anti-heroes yeah, yeah. wolverine's a cool guy deadpool's in the mix yeah fucking kazuya who is arguably a villain but is kind of really cool and turns into a devil and chucks his dad off volcanoes you know it's complicated well, he's just a villain to uh, the Iron Fist. Well, he also did try and take over the world and has started like multiple global conflicts oh, in the name of money. Th- yeah, I forgot he took over the the Haya- the Machinima clan and yeah. then uh, with his power <laughs> wreaked havoc. Yeah, and, like he's been a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. Kazuya is complicated. He's complicated. You know, we're trying, Kazuya. We- <laughs> I think Jin, the. You want to know what? When you grow up fatherless as a Mashiva, uh, you're going to do okay. If not, you're going to want to <laughs> kill the planet. Yeah. Or, like in Jin's case, in Tekken 6, I think it was, you'll try to kill the planet. But it's only so that, like, a long-lost relative doesn't kill the planet even worse. The Mishimas are complicated. <laughs> yeah. It's, we cut to a creepy cell. Uh, a creepy cell we've seen before uh, with Queto holding this key. Uh, spoilers. The creepy cell feature is Dario Queto sitting on a rickety stool alone, fingering the key around his neck. Sean, you were right. About everything. Last week, you were like, I think this person he's trying to find maybe held captive or the mysterious woman was trying to find might have been Mm -hmm. held captive and she's looking for him thinking she's a. I think you're correct in your hypothesis. I wish you thought I was correct regarding my feelings on the Dominator, but I will take this victory. Well, hey, what can hold this man (laughs) in this giant room? It's a room sized Dominator, guys. Oh, no. Um, but yes, my, my, my gut instinct on never trust Dario Cueto proves out again. He's talking out loud. News of this temple and what's happening here is spreading. It's such a shame you cannot share it with me. I want you to know she came looking for you. She calls herself the Black Lotus. I know she was a little girl back then, but you should see her now. I could have given her this key, but I'm not a fool. I have to protect this temple from Matanza. And as Quato walks away, a shadow enters frame. Shikamaru is Matanza. This is a Naruto crossover episode. I'm calling it now. We're going to get Sasuke versus Pentagon Jr. over the sad edgelords who are just trying to make it work. And that'd be pretty cool to me. But yeah, we, go, we, we, we see that this is the first glimpse we see of Matanza. We see his shadow. And I'm very excited. I need to stop using Twitter. Here's the weird thing about doing a wrestling podcast like six, seven years after the fact. Yeah. And being so active on wrestling Twitter. I do know who plays Matanza. I'm very excited. He's a great wrestler. But I'm just like, oh, I wish I didn't know. Shockmaster? I can't, I can cannot confirm nor deny that Tugboat, a.k.a. Is it Shockmaster Tugboat? Yes. Anyway, I cannot confirm nor deny that the Shockmaster comes through this wall and then the British Bulldog, with his ass to the camera, laughs heartily. Yay, yay. Our next match tonight, Drago versus Aerostar. This was a very fun babyface versus babyface. Mm-hmm. High flyer versus high flyer. Speed versus speed. But even up top, light advantage to a Drago. Like, they're very evenly matched, but Drago is getting a lot in. Uh, before we get deep, deep, uh, initial thoughts. I only have one note because I it was just a good match. Great match, yeah. Is it towards the end, or do you want it to, up top? It's pretty much the end. All right. So then I'll walk through, I'll walk through this match a little bit. I like... <laughs> Aerostar hits a Hurricane Rana, and Mad Striker comes in. 
Uh, not to be confused with the Frankensteiner. The Hurricane Rana is a bit more of an angle. Uh, Frankensteiner is a leg scissor, is a leg scissors, but almost like 180 degrees. You go, it's a straight line. You go up down. So yeah, uh, Striker comes in not to be confused with the Frankensteiner. Vampiro, yeah, when Scott Steiner was about a hundred pounds lighter and can move. Like, why are we attacking Scott Steiner? He's not in this company. He did nothing wrong. Yeah. Yeah, leave, leave Scott Steiner alone. That man is doing math and fucking big booty. Let the, let the big booty daddy be the big booty daddy. Hot take. But yeah, beautiful match. A lot of like one for one, one for one, but always Drago getting a little bit more. Can I say something real quick? Please. I was like, oh, I guess did Scott Steiner, did he go into like mathematics? Is he a professor or something now? But then I was like, oh, yeah, he does really poor math on an episode. Actually, the worst thing about it, really good math. Like if you take a calculator and you check his math, he's 100 percent right. It's just the act of Scott Steiner doing math. Beautiful match. Arrow stars over the top 619 is still like my favorite move. Like, I'm, I'm shocked every time I see him hit that 619, but instead of going through the ropes, he goes over the top, and I'm like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? Man Striker is a, is a Pottermore fan, confirmed, which I did not expect in this episode. I don't know what that means. He's a big Harry Potter guy. Okay. Uh, Aero, he had this arrow star falling from the sky like a comet. Ha <laughs> ha, I'll use my muggle words from now on if anyone hates these references. What? Man Striker, stop talking about Harry Potter and call the match. He loves it. He loves his Harry Potter. The, sec- the sort of second gear of this match picks up after Drago hits a brutal mat return and then cuts off Arrow Star. Uh, Ar- cuts off Arrow Star with another brutal drop kick and then hits the outside Tope Conio corkscrew. The second by the time they hit second gear, it's all Drago. Like as soon as as soon as Drago hits that drop kick to cut off Arrow Star, Dra- it's all Drago. He's taken over. He wins the match with Blockbuster DDT. First time the Blockbuster DDT has finished a match. But when you have that much momentum going, Drago's going to win at 4 minutes 13 seconds. See, I saw someone do that. It, it kind of, it didn't work. It was in a previous episode, the Blockbuster DDT, but it was the Black Bleaster DDT. No. <laughs> Is is this an Amanda Show reference? Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I did you know I sold <laughs> season three of the Amanda Show DVD on eBay for a hundred and seventy dollars? Congratulations! Ooh, How much ooh. is it going for now? I wonder. Oh no, that that it was just sold. Oh, like just now? Congratulations! Like, uh, Make that money. like yeah, like two weeks ago. Oh, bring in the dancing lobsters. Mm-hmm. After the match, uh, it's sportsmanship, baby. Drago helps up. Arrow Star, he offers him the hand. He's a sweetie. It's how you know he's a good guy. Double thumbs up, baby. Big Lucha chance. And I liked the Arrow Star's like holding his head or something, or like he poked an eye out because someone says, oh, I guess he misjudged the horn and lost an eye. <laughs> the horn of Drago, that is. Some of the, one of the best hugs in the game, but you gotta be careful when you're hugging a dragon. Okay, speaking of hugs. Donkey, baby. I just, I, I know, the, Sean, your trepidation on the Dominator. You kind of enjoyed the Hugginator, but what about this? We do kind of elastic mesh netting, and it goes in, so it looks like a cage, but it's it's just going to kind of like... I, like look like it's netted up and caught a dog and it just does that over and over again. Now you make sure you you hook the leg. It's the safety precaution because if, oh, my dog's claw got caught in one of the, the mesh nettings, that's not on us. That's on you for not like treating your dog with safety in mind. Like if you... In the middle of the pitch, if you have to start throwing out safety, like covering your bases, it's a bad sign. I'm going to put that out there. Well, when you have a a razor blade to shave your face, there's safety instructions on that, isn't there? Yeah, but when they're showing, when they're like, when someone's like, hey, you might need to buy a razor blade. They're not like, they're not like, they're not not just defensive. It's not just like, hey, by the way, be careful on this. It's, and if you decide to cut yourself with your own razor blade while you're waiting for your parents to come back from a trip on their boat they inherited from their sketchy Swiss bank friend, don't come crying to me. It was a large knife. 
I apologize. <laughs> uh, so my only issue, because my only issue with the Dominator, it's the same question I asked when the Hugginator came up. What is the intended? What is the intended mental state of the dog? Terror. Now I'm not on board. Then I am not on board, and you knew this going into this pitch. I just want an obedient dog who's not like, oh, I love you because you're just there. No, I want them to know. I want them to love me because they know I can end them. Uh, that is, uh, that's not love. That that's, is manipulation. That's why I and love Nicole. <laughs> Because you put Nicole in the Dominator? No, no, I love Nicole because I know she can end me just by one what? glance. Oh, baby, she's so attractive. As romantic as this is <laughs> for the terror dog, I am out. Okay. We go to the temple gym now where Phoenix is working out on the heavy bag, gray gym shorts and mask, which, fuck, yeah. If, if, if specifically Lucha Underground got the game and this was not an alternate costume for Phoenix, I would be livid. Great look. Great look. When Katrina, a uh, mysterious finger plays the nobody behind you game and appears in front of Phoenix. <gasps> I didn't know how else to describe that move. Does that make sense? Yeah. The words I used? Okay. Yep. She appears, traces Phoenix's Dreamcatcher chest tattoo and asks, does this protect you from the nightmares? No. Dude, Katrina's terrifying. I fucking love her. She asked Phoenix. She, dude, all the lines here are just so like, again, we talk about like, what, 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 what did we call this? What did you call this before? This is the, um, instead of like something of wrestling, you said this is like, dude, ah, oh, fuck. Uh, you need I to give more details. As opposed to just a wrestling show, this is like the something. You compared this to another, another show, I think. WMAC Masters. WMAC Masters, yes. This is a, it's a very WMAC Masters, a lot of like sort of Riverdale as well in this. Like all the horror in 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 the temple is very like Riverdale and sort of not even as much supernatural because it's not about going from town to town. It's all in this central location. Mm -hmm. And the stories, instead of getting a new story, a new monster of the week, it's the same monsters. We're we're just building on the lore and uncovering layers. And yo, know, I is she's so scary what can scare a man who cannot die oh i know because he's not a man he's a bird a phoenix a bird cage shaped dominator uh, oh no. she goes on to say <laughs> <laughs> she goes on to say i have a message for you but not from mil muertes it's from me and she shoves her tongue into Phoenix's mouth and they go blah, 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 like adults do when they're feeling randy. And she pulls back and says, keep this a secret. Because if Mill was to find out, he would bury us both alive. Ooh. But hey, then you just get to... That's, that's not a mean thing he's doing. He's just like, hey, I experienced this. I want you to experience as well. Is this when we find out that maybe I was locked in a cage that slowly closed and opened a bunch? Maybe I want to give that experience to the dogs of the world just like I did because the individual was saying, come here, you little mutt, and made me bark for them. James, we have to cut all of this out. Why? We can't let people know your vil villain origin stories. Oh. We can't. Because if they, if they find out that you were locked in a cage that was slowly closing for many years of your life, they'll ask, who did that to you? And I can't afford to let that answer out. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. moving on. It also would be <sighs> no. bad because they'd be like, well, I get the Dominator now. <laughs> Put me down for three. Who do you, what would your reaction to be if, Kat, if you were working out on your heavy bag, gray shorts, mask on, and Katrina pull, came up to you like this? Basically kind of like... like cheated on mill with you and and gave you the hey this is our secret now or else bill will murder you to death oh i what would, would say your reaction be i'd walk up to mill with nicole in arm no nicole and hr mm. in arm and say hey just so you're aware uh katrina's no longer uh, allowed in the temple that's true i forget you having a beautiful a uh, beautiful loving relationship does add a wrinkle Meanwhile, my single ass is like, oh, I guess I got to keep a secret now. Okay. <laughs> I guess I got to go jack off into Chavo's bag. Yeah. <laughs> True. True. 
Because <laughs> Katrina just left a steamy loaf in there, and that's what I'm into. <laughs> Phoenix is kind of the hero you were talking about before. I think where like he's such a baby face that if he just beat the shit out of Evil Lee's, everyone would be like, "Whoa!" Because even his reaction to this is like is kind is he's not like turned on. He's not like re- he's selling it, but he's not like, "Oh, sexy Katrina, maybe I am a bad guy." No, he's just kind of like, mm, mm-hmm. "You shouldn't have done that." Ah, oh, jeez, <laughs> I love it. I love I'm a Superman fan. I love Captain America. I love Phoenix. I love these hero these heroiest of heroes and just being like. Uh, this is getting messy, but mm, gotta do the right thing. I love it. I do. We then see a little just like, hey, it's Mundo versus the machine. And in one of the it, it's Mundo walking down the hallway of the temple and you see his abs. And I'm like, those are my 2023 goals is to have abs. So I'm working on my cum gutters. They're coming in nice. But now I have to start working up the upper abs. So those start coming in full. And what I need to do at the end of 2023, I hope I can post a shirtless pic on Instagram and get minimum 100 likes. Hell yeah. Thirst trap incoming. Mm -hmm, mm Y'all got warned. It's not really thirst trap. It's just, um, hey guys, am I pretty? Uh, That's that's the definition of a thirst trap. But it's sad. I'm not horny. That's the definition of a thirst trap. Okay. Thirst traps disguise themselves as being horny when they're... And they can still be horny, but there's always an element of sadness, I think, to a, a real nice thirst trap. <laughs> send your send your angry emails to james at marshland.org. Um, not at all. I, I send you an email every week for this podcast, and I could not be bothered to remember. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. Also, maybe don't say... Do, hey, guys. At MSS Pod on Twitter or Marshland Monster on Instagram. Don't give out my email address. <laughs> These perverts over here, even though I think most of our listeners already have my email address because they're our friends. That's true. Yeah, you perverts. Make sure you save that perv energy until the until the full cum gutter picture is revealed on Instagram from a year's time. We go to our main event. Truly, some of the best abs in the game. Johnny mm-hmm. Mundo. Versus... Equally, I mean, he's more mass than definition, Mm -hmm. but great abs. Not to take away from the abs of the machine, the cage. Great abs, bad facial hair. Get that out of here. Whoa, get out of here. I love it. And I love, so I was watching, I'm watching AEW Dark as I want to do. Cage is wrestling there. And he refers to himself as the weapon excellence of execution. This man combined the nicknames of Wolverine and Bret Hart. He is secretly such a fucking dork. I don't and think I it's love secret. That. It's not. It's actually really not. He's very upfront with how much he loves Wolverine. Like Wolverine's his guy. All of his moves are named after Wolverine. And, or like Wolverine, either, either Wolverine moves like the t- Tornado Claw or straight up Weapon X is the name of his finisher. I, I, I don't know, man. I would love to... I don't know. The, we don't know these people. We've never met uh, Brian Cage. He might not be a nice person, but from every, everything I've heard, uh, he seems really nice. And there is something so sweet to me about this giant fucking jet, like just this huge dude who's also very athletic and very physical and just mean in the ring, who is secretly just like, oh, no, I kind of want some cocoa. Maybe my favorite comic book. A nice night at the fire. To me, that sounds pretty sweet. Like there, I don't know. He's just so he's he's secretly a sweetheart, which is like my favorite thing about like usually the most violent wrestlers secretly turn out to be absolute sweeties. He's on Twitter defending Wolverine Origins. Well, I don't think anyone was defending Wolverine Origins. <laughs> <laughs> but I just I don't know. Yeah, that but that that that's Brian Cage the man. We must discuss Brian Cage the machine. Who? Did not rip the gold in half. Just the belt, just the leather part. It, the yeah. actual centerpiece was not torn in half, Sean. Yeah, way to, way to bring that back and throw it in my face. I want to, ah, and I shouldn't have checked, so I, I actually can't say anything. I want to say that was retconned, but I did not go back to look. So, James, you were right about everything, like you always are. Great uh, cum gutters, you, bud. You want to know what? Keep talking. I'll, I'm pulling up last week's episode you sure 
So yeah, we talked about Mundo comes out first, uh, Cage comes out second, with the ripped belt, uh, like a fucking Chad. Like very, it was a very cool visual to see the ripped belt around his neck, just like a fucking Chad. And uh, the match starts. It's an interesting match. Obviously, like everything, Cage has the power. And that's going to be what this match is. Uh, very similar to the Puma one, where Mundo's, Mundo's technique and speed and athleticism and ring awareness, uh, ring intelligence, because un- uh, Mundo has just been wrestling for a lot longer than a lot of these people on the roster. Not everyone, uh, but a lot of them. So you see how Mundo puts a match together. It's is so scientific. Like it's very, it's very exciting to me to watch Mundo put a match together, uh, because again, it is so logical, especially in this match with Cage. Like you're, he's so much bigger than me. He's so much stronger than me. I need to find, inter- I need to find these ways to take him down, uh, and he does. And, you'll, and, and he never, and he never does it in a way that makes Cage feel dumb or less strong than he is. It's just that Mundo is that good. <laughs> I'm just at the part where, like, Conan, bloody face, just, like, crying up to the sky. Uh, no, the, the <laughs> gold does not get ripped in half, just the belt. Okay. Then, yes, you were, you, you were correct last week. He would be way too powerful, or the gold is very thin in order to be able to do that. He might be way too powerful. This Johnny Mundo struggles to put him to put him off his feet one of the big stories in this match is that johnny mundo is gets a lot more moves in comparatively in the first like in the first two acts or so mm-hmm. it's a lot more johnny mundo it's a lot more of johnny's moves than it is cage's moves but that's because cage usually he has so much more knockout power in a single move that it's it's one of those like if johnny ever stops moving if if he lets himself get hit by one this match might be over like Johnny has to do like three moves to every one of Cage's because of how powerful he is. Mm-hmm. I did bring up how Conan was bloody. They bring up how oh, Conan's blood is on Cage's hand because he's a machine and he doesn't mm-hmm. wash himself. However, the Dominator, please wash. Do not let Chavo win. People will start oh shitting God. in there. And people oh, don't want to clean that. It gunks it up. Anyway, talking about this match, James... Uh, King Cuerno at some point. I have no great transition to bring up King Cuerno, this little perv watching from the rafters Mm -hmm. out of nowhere disappears and just start and it's just staring intently. Uh, We have no real idea. As far as we know, these two have never these three men have never interacted. Yeah. Right. Cage never interact with Cuerno. I feel like, no, I don't think I don't think Johnny and Cuerno have had too much interaction either. Maybe in Aztec. Maybe. Maybe probably they could have been there at the same time or the lead up yeah. to Aztec when it was like the 10 versus 10. Sure. The qualifiers mm-hmm. uh, up to Aztec warfare. Probably. Yeah. But very interesting to see Cuerno just absolutely creeping up on the top. Vampiro says like, oh, man, I don't like this Johnny Mundo. He he may look fly and flashy, but he's got an agenda. He'll do anything to win. And it's like that is competition, man. It's not an agenda. That is the goal. That is the purpose of this is to get the title. Vampiro, shut <laughs> up. He worded it wrong, but I do appreciate because someone like Mundo, who is a hero, even at, even in this match, he is different from say Puma or Phoenix, where Puma and Phoenix, part of part of winning to them is the honor, like like winning honorably is important. It's not so much if whether I win or lose, because if I win without honor, it's it's almost as bad as losing to me. Where I don't think Mundo has that, but that's part of why he can he pulls moves off. He's so he's so smart in the ring. He has, he's so scientific the way he like traps Cage's leg to trip out the other one, which is a spot I loved. But that's not a spot that might have might necessarily pop in the heads of Puma or Phoenix, because to win with honor means to win with your own expression. They're like in some ways they're let they're they're less adaptive, both morally and like in ring where Mundo is a lot more willing to like I th- I feel like Mundo would... I mean, Mundo kicked Big Rick in the nuts. Technically legal, like, Square kicked him in the nuts. Five feet in the air. 
a legal move, but not a very honorable move. No, nah, it, it's, it's fine when the person is blowing smoke in your face. I guess. I, I guess. I don't know. But yeah. Well, we're on the subject of Vampiro saying just stupid shit. Oh, I got this one. Uh, I, I, I hope it's the same one. There's a situation <laughs> where they go outside of the ring and one of them almost falls onto the, like the metal stairs. Is that your quote? Oh, no. I have a different quote. This actually might be a striker. Sorry. Someone says, did you know if you fall on the metal stairs, you could die? And it was said so much like a six-year-old telling you a fact they heard. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> someone gave this individual a job. I'm telling from the oh, from the top of this episode, Vampiro is very excited tonight. And I love excited Vampiro. What's the quote you had? So I think my, mine was actually a uh, Matt Stryker quote. Where they're talking about uh, the, the, the power behind Johnny Mundo's legs. He says, a lot of kicks for Mundo, the point of the toe going into the mouth. Not as hot as it, is, not as hot as it sounds. I'm sure Tony Atlas likes that. What did Tony do? Tony Atlas, a uh, famed wrestler from the territory days, famous nowadays for having a big old foot fetish. Oh, okay. That, like, but in well, that's what he did. He had a foot fetish. But in 2014, 2015, A, for the foot fetish was not part of the gimmick. That's just something he does now. And B, who the fuck knows who Tony Atlas is? You do, you <laughs> fucking nerd. Yeah, but I'm a fucking nerd. And you should not market towards me. I will let you down. <laughs> this is also something that I don't like in underground anything, where when you have such an emphasis on... Hey, we are doing the good shit. Oh, everyone else has such low uh, attention spans and they're not really putting forth towards the art. We are the artists here and everyone else is just t the watered down or the commercial. They they emphasize that so much. Rap music will do it as well. And just yeah. if you have to make that known, that is now your gimmick. You are now a gimmicky individual just let the art stand on its own and you're good the wrestlers are doing that the commentators mm -hmm. are not i i do want to put an asterisk on it just because of how much of a monopoly is happening in wrestling wrestling at the time because there was such a monopoly from the wwe and you see it today we're kind of like a lot of american fans only can only understand wrestling under the WWE style, because they do have a very distinct style, uh, because they are marketing a lot more towards families and children. So like the in-ring work sometimes, especially under Vince, is not as important as the character work, as the promos and stuff. And if you like characters and promos, that's totally a valid way to like watch wrestling and to enjoy wrestling. But it's not the only way. So like you almost do have to make a statement that hey, we are doing a different style. Our style is more akin to the AAA Lucha Libre style. And for American audiences, this might be a little different, but give us a chance. Oh, no, that's, that's totally fine. But when you're saying like, we're the real shit, watch us. The others, fuck off. That's that baby baby. That I agree with that. Yes, that's what I am implying. But to say like, hey, guys, uh, your taste might not be to this. But here, let us explain what it is, and mm -hmm. hey, give us a shot. You might like us. That's fine. That's being very humble about yourself. But when you're just like, we're the greatest, we'll make you, your attention is on us because it's not them. Yeah, there is a sort of a wrestling promo unwritten rule of like when you're going – Two wrestlers were going into these promo against each other, and the I think it was the babyface says, "This guy's a fucking idiot. Uh, he's a bad wrestler, and I'm gonna beat him, and I'm the best." And the other guy who uh, he was cutting the promo against, the veteran in the situation, comes up to this this new guy and says, "What? What the fuck are you doing? You you kind of just screwed yourself. Because now if you beat me, you beat someone. And this was like for a pay per view. There is no fight." Like, you beat me, and everyone knew you were going to beat me. Mm -hmm. Like, you you didn't challenge yourself. Why would people pay money to see you beat someone you were already going to beat? Or, I, I beat you, 
And now you just lost to someone who was so much worse than you. Like yeah. either way, you're bringing us both down. And I feel the same way about the yeah about competition in your field. Unless someone like, unless someone has done something really personal to you, there's no reason for you to like. If you have to hit other people to make yourself look better, you don't look that much better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You just don't. And usually it's the opposite. Like when you punch down like that, now everyone kind of hates this scene more. Like, because you spend all this time making the other person look bad instead of making yourself look good. Yeah. Now, every, like, if, if a rising tide raises all boats, a lowering tide kind of does the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But this match is crazy. Yeah. I have no transition other than this match was great. Uh, yes, it's, we, we yeah. get, like, a high-flying spot where I think Cage is outside of the ring, and then Mundo's about to, like, jump towards him, and... Yo. You, uh, it's going towards the commentator desk and you see Vampiro get up and he's like, oh no, oh no, Vampiro's (laughs) scared of this, of like, oh, if I don't get up, there's a chance that I will be hit. And I very much enjoyed that. But in the same instance, you get Vampiro scared. And then when Mundo goes, lands the attack, they're all in a daze. Cuerno starts moving down and l- just looks menacing. They get yeah. back into the ring, but Cuerno, it, as this is happening, as he's on the prowl, there is a woman in the crowd just screaming like she is about to witness a murder of like, Mundo, you need to look. I, it added so much genuine panic to what is going on. Whoever yeah. that woman is deserves a carp launch to any wrestling match she wants to go to just give give her front row whatever row she wants for free this woman is comped yes and also like put more on everyone who's ever covered john morrison or lucha underground or any of his appearances outside of wwe has said this but we're, i'll say it again and again this guy is such a star mm-hmm. like for him to pull that reaction out of someone and he is. He's do. He's doing it so well in this match against a huge and athletic. We didn't even talk about Cage's moonsault. Cage, Cage goes for a moon. A springboard moonsault. He's not like he slowly climbs to the top and then he posi- No, he jumps from the second rope to the top rope seamlessly, turns around, moonsaults all in the matter of like half a second. Mm-hmm. And it's a great looking moonsault. Oh yeah. Like, and for Mundo to have such a a competitive match where it's clear that cage is stronger. It's clear that this is not easy, but Mundo is doing everything to make it work and keep people on their feet on his side. It's, I don't blame that woman. I am. If I am that woman, yeah, James, I am that woman as are all of us. Mundo, please avoid King Cuerno. He's going to sweep your leg and cause a disqualification at six minutes and 35 seconds. I was like, this gets the DQ. What fucking evil lease does anyone else? This gets the DQ. Shout out to Havoc to jump back on that. One of my favorite re- ways to distract a referee which is how Ivelisse gets away with her shit, is Son of Havoc throwing his arm around the shoulder of the ref and just having a real, like, hey, man, I don't know. Am I okay? Just, like, as a person, <laughs> am I all right? The ref's like, yeah, you're fine. I need to go look at this. It's like, okay. No, but unfortunately, there is there is no distraction. The ref sees all of it, disqualifies. And this is where we need the far face movement. Of Johnny Mundo just losing his shit. <laughs> yeah, and just beating the crap out of Cuerno. Yeah, well. It's Dario the Cueto comes out of his office. Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> real quick, uh, Cage sees this and just does like a nah and starts walking up the stairs as Cuerno takes out a chair, puts it on the, the ring post and smashes Johnny's leg. And then Cuerno runs away. Yeah. Then Cueto comes out. A couple of, yeah, and a couple of times, I for, thank you, because Cuerno, I forgot, destroys the knee. He mm-hmm. rams it in, he takes the chair, Cage gets the, bah! And Cueto comes out, uh, says, Johnny, because you're my friend, I'm not going to let your five-star matches end like this. Restart the match. Ding, 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 ding! I'm cu- I was so, this was such an interesting reaction, too, from Johnny, where he's not mad 
at Dario Cueto. He's excited to fight, but he also knows he's fucked. Because, mm-hmm. like, all of his offense and his counter, like, he's a lot of this match was him countering and him, like, avoiding the big moves. All of that comes from his legs. Yeah. Everything he does is knee and or leg based. Which I really enjoyed him playing off, hey, I have a bad shin and knee. So when he tries to kick with the opposite, it doesn't do as well because he's off balance. When he tries to kick the others, he's doing damage to him and Cage. But Mm -hmm. I really loved a move Cage did to get him up on his shoulders. If you have ever worked with your father in any construction capacity, even if it's just like moving rocks from one side of the yard to another, you've heard the, hey, lift with your knees, not your back. Well, Cage must have heard his father say that all the time because he's lifting with the rope, not his back, because like Johnny is on the rope, like trying to climb up the ropes with his arms and cage just kind of swoops underneath to like get his shoulders up on and then like uses the (laughs) ropes levity to bring him up fully. Yeah. I spent a lot of, I spent a lot of this match, like putting over how smart Johnny was and how scientific he is. It's not to take away. Cage is a very smart wrestler. Cage, both like storytelling wise and the character both like understand what it takes and how to go from move to move. Mm-hmm. Both are it's just the experience of Mundo, I think, more than anything else. Yeah. But like, Cage is very smart this entire time. Uh, I think commentary kind of puts the second half of this match best. Uh, Striker says Johnny has heart, he has fight, and Vampiro cuts him off, but he has no brains kicking someone with a busted knee. And just that, like, that's like everything you just said, though. That's like, that's this like really tragedy because we all also know. It's like going in to watch Romeo and Juliet. You know it's going to be a whole bunch of dead teenagers at the end. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. And we, it's, it is written on the... Why did you yay, yay? That, that is not a that is not a yay, yay. I that love the a, bard. Oh, oh. Not true. All right, fair. Fair. Anything that man writes, give a title. Um, uh, Taming of the Shrew. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. That is... Mm-mm. All right. I don't have time to get into all the problems with the Taming of the Shrew. Yeah, but yeah. trust me, not his best. Cage with that metalingus, uh, his F5 that like he put the way he gets Johnny like vertical and drops his head scares me. It looks fucking great. It's the second oh. time he's done it like this. So like that's that's how the move's meant to do. Cage truly is a machine given cunniling or metalingus. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I, I ruined the joke. Cage gives head to a tailpipe. Uh huh. And it's all over. Mundo, Mundo was fighting a losing ba- uh, battle as the tornado claw and then the weapon X secures Cage's victory at 10 minutes and three seconds. Oh, I got just one more note on just the end. Don't react to it. I, I want to see a Cage versus Mill match. It'll be my dream come true. Hell yeah. Credits roll. But we're in Cueto's office. Hold on. Why is why are we seeing something during the credits? Well. Dario Cueto on the phone. She's found the place. She's really pissed off. We got to do something. I don't think that picked up the microphone. I made knocking sounds. No, it, it some of it did. Yeah. In your mu- right. in your file, it will pick up. Yes. Dario shouts out, go home. Show's over. And we hear a voice. James, I'm sorry. I didn't know he was going to be in this season. Oh, no. We're just getting started. Enter. And I literally said, oh, no. When I saw the face of Alberto El Patron, formerly known as Alberto Del Rio, also known as one of the more problematic wrestlers of the 2010s. He, uh, he, he's, he's at the temple. Alberto is at the temple. It's This is weird because I know who he is, but you don't know who he is. I sure don't. I assumed he was not a wrestler because I'm like, well, if this is following tech and Mortal Kombat stuff... This man is a federal agent investigating the temple. That would be awesome. That I, you know what? I hope that is his character because that would actually be very cool if it's a sort of Lei Wu Long type. Fingers crossed. Yeah, and there's so hopefully we get that and we get a little bit more of Montanza. And yeah, Google Alberto El Patron if you really want to know. Not a great guy, but he's not here very long, thankfully. What What was he doing? Putting cats in dominators? Fucking. Pig. 
truly yeah pretty pretty much uh, a lot of lot a lot of bad things no no <laughs> <laughs> no no yeah perfect and on and on the emergence of this fucking douchebag no no and james let's uh, let's break it down for these beautiful people what do you have to plug you know me i'm the goose vk you can come over on twitch.tv slash goose vk uh hang out share a laugh uh I, uh and uh don't poop your drawers unless you want to Hey guys, listen to my music under Marsh, Land, Monster, wherever music is found. Head over to MLMPod.com to find out information about all the other podcasts that I do, like Formulaic, The Height of Horror, Hit It and Crit It, and Mostly Speaking Sentai. Wherever you're listening to this, you can also listen to those. And oh my god, head over to Patreon.com forward slash MLMPod, where for $5 a month you get exclusive podcasts every single Friday. And if you're a $10 pod, if you're a $10 patron, you get exclusive monthly content as well as shout outs on every single free feed podcast so let's begin with those starting with steve f i'm knocking but you can't hear it oh eric berry of ranger command power hour alex z the waz orion he's a rapper d hyphen f o d fo kayla aka two grapes jordan b the chaos witch my Bickle, my brother and common law, Joshua Jakis. Steve Barnes at Intro Void. He's a musician, but also of Sweet Child of Time and Sweet Child of 1899. Those are podcasts. The womb in which I emerged, my mother. Oh my God, my mother's womb was like a dominator for me because my umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck. She was supposed to hook the leg, not my throat. And finally, Lil Corey's BFF and roommate, Shane. I've been James. I've been Sean. And this has been Sweaty, Sweaty Time, Time Pro, Pro Wrestling. Wrestling. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Just like ya, mumbling words, slowing the verses in your sight. If you got a minute, listen to the wizard of me. Impeccable, simply, when apply quickly. Over criminal beats, my divine lines make you reconsider competition with me. No me, predominantly, for supplying tight lyrics and a chronicle leaf. And I divide income from both to provide my bros an opportunity to make dough just like me. Residually, through musical means, but recently still moving beautiful greens. In a legal degree, I'm living dangerously. I gotta get my money consistently. What I aim to attain doesn't come in the form of a chain or a brand name. My name in the game, affiliated with heavyweights doing the same. Lucas King, when it come to one, two, son, you fuck you if you hate. Up in this section, lyrical weapons bust you in the face. Lay down, stay down, what you say now that I spray round, leave you face down on the street. Lights fade out and then it's peace. Decrease the pace and increase the heat, release the hate and just face defeat. The There's no need to be near to me unless you want my family. Cause many motherfuckers wanna damage me, I react so smooth yet savagely. The thought of you closing in on me is a definite impossibility. In hostility, we as calm as nothing new. We love to prove that we the bomb. Blow up, show up in your view. We on it, darn shit. Bossed up, flawless outfits pressed up. Leave you stretched out with your chest cut. In the booth, I'm next up. When I poof, it's the best blunt from the neck up. That's all I gotta use to get you to respect us. Reflect trust, difficult to break up. Like brick pounds, but our slick sound will reign angelic as a relic from the underground. The life in the story, legend of a hustler. Stripes and glory, words can't muster. Any description of it, fuck the system, y'all can't. Touch us. We white hot with major demand like white rock. A primitive man, he might not ever adapt to the drastic style that I. Oh, yeah.